In this video, we're gonna go through the Planch program that took my Planch from this to this. Now here's the full program, let's break down and explain why the program worked so well and how I was able to clean up my form in only four weeks. So everyone can do this in four weeks by the way, but I am trying to show why periodization is so underrated in calisthenics. Okay, so first to show you why this program worked so well, I need to show you what I was doing before. So before I was able to full planche and straddle planche, however, my form wasn't too good. Because of how I learned the planche before, I didn't learn it in the best way, so my protraction wasn't great. So this is why I tried to work on my protraction, so I had to regrow go back to straddle planche to try and work on my form and to work on my form I did this the only way I knew how at the time and that was with a calisthenics bro science kind of program that means a lot of attempts a lot of low holds a lot of negatives a lot of kind of you know regressions and um, planche push-ups the usual stuff you see online and not to say any of those specific exercises are bad but when you don't program them right in the long term so you're doing either too much in a week or you're not progressing week to week or or workout to workout, you don't find that over the months that you progress at all. So overall, over the six months that I did this kind of calisthenics bro science program, where I was doing a lot of attempts, my straddle planche went from this to this. Of course, working on protraction, you can see there's not much improvement at all. Maybe I had a bit stronger in my glutes and my lower body tension, I was a bit flatter, but in terms of my elevation, holding a good straddle planche, it wasn't great. This was pretty disappointing because I was used to working on the full planche, doing full planche presses, but now I was working on the form of the straddle planche and I didn't even improve in six weeks, so it was a real kind of knockdown to my ego. I was starting to get thoughts like, maybe I'm just weak, maybe the hollow body planche just isn't for me, maybe I've just won't be able to relearn it. Maybe I should just stick to the full planche and go back because it was working for me. So I was getting a real knock to my confidence and this really wasn't good. So I had to make a change. I spent a full week researching powerlifting programs, strength programming, reading books, looking at videos, understanding the whole ins and outs of programming for strength. This was partially to make videos on the strength principles for you guys, but also it was for myself to understand how do you program effectively for a strength skill like the planche. And this was the start of something great. The scary part was if I didn't program this right or if I chose the wrong exercises, then maybe I would fully lose my full planche skill so maybe it would take me maybe another year to get the full planche if I mess this up because that would be two months of me not training the full planche and maybe even my straddle planche would get worse so it was pretty scary kind of regressing like this so with that it was time to put the full planche on the shelf for now and work on my hollow body straddle planche once more so with no time to waste I got started. The program I made was periodized, so that means there's a change in volume and or intensity over time. If you don't understand what that means, then check out the other strength principle videos that'll be at the end of this video. So watch this video through, and if you don't understand anything, check out those videos. The six weeks were split into blocks. So first I had a sort of hypertrophy block, then I had a strength block, then I had a peaking block, which is where I would test my maxes. Then at the end was the deload. Before I dive in and show you how I progressed week to week, let me explain the exercise selection because this is arguably the most important part of the program because if I chose the wrong exercises, I wouldn't progress in the right thing, which is of course getting that hollow body planche, so fixing that scapular winging. So let me explain why I chose these exercises. And of course the exercises didn't change over the weeks, so they were the same exercises. All that changed over the weeks was either the volume, intensity, or frequency. So the first exercise in every workout was the assisted hollow body straddle planche hold. I made this a point to prioritize this exercise because that's what I wanted most. My number one goal was a hollow body straddle planche for at least five seconds. That was the goal of this entire program. So it made sense to put this first in your workout. Your biggest lifts or most draining lifts, they should go first. Whatever you want to prioritize in terms of your goals and what's most draining, that's usually the largest lifts. So that's what I put first in the workout. And of course I did this assisted, I didn't focus on attempts because from talking to numerous experts, Viktor Kamenov, Thomas Kurganov, 
all of them said that doing assisted planche holds at about 80% of what you're capable of, 80% of your body weight. Doing those kind of holds is where you really progress. So that's what I did. So when I do my workouts, I actually work my push and my pull on the same day. So after doing my assisted hollow body straddle planche set, I would go to doing assisted front lever pull up. So this is my secondary goal. So I always like to have a primary push goal, which in this case was a five second hollow body straddle planche hold unassisted. But then I always like to have a primary pull goal because I train these on the same day. So it's nice to have a goal for each. And in this case, it was a full front lever pull up for at least three reps because my my pre-R before was two reps, so I just wanted to beat that by any amount of reps. Clean, pull up to the bar. So I chose to do assisted front lever pull ups. This just made sense. So those were my two main lifts I was prioritizing and everything after that in the workouts were accessories. So my first primary accessories, so the, my next two exercises, those were assisted straddle planche presses because of course we know the presses, working that greater range of motion helps with the straddle planche on its own doing it statically. And then my primary accessory for pull was a pseudo pull to touch. So all this is is a foot elevated or foot assisted front lever pull up to touch. And my secondary accessory for every workout was just one exercise and that was the scapula push-up. Of course, if you want to work on your protraction, you need to isolate this and the scapula push-up is the perfect exercise for this. So with the accessories, I like to isolate the thing it is that I'm working on but making it as similar to the full kind of exercise as I can. So the scapula push-up, basically the same thing as doing it in the planche. So I just do scapula push-ups and use a resistance band as resistance, and this is scalable. So you can progressively overload with this over the weeks by just using a harder and harder band, and that's exactly what I did. And lastly, on any day, if I felt like I had extra energy or didn't feel fatigued, then I had two optional exercises that I could choose. And most of the days I did bicep curls and tricep extensions as a super so just to work on the arms a little bit more. So the idea in this first week is you adapt to high volume. So this is more muscular hypertrophy. And we know this muscle building, this kind of phase is gonna help when we try and convert that muscle into strength for the straddle planche. So we were doing a lot of presses and a lot of long holds, about 20 to 30 seconds. These are really long holds that you're not gonna be used to. So it's gonna be a new stimulus for the body. So you're gonna really trigger the adaptations to hold even longer. My glutes after this first week were on fire, but really into the second week, my glutes were feeling a lot stronger. So maybe sometimes with some particular muscle groups, it doesn't take too long to adapt to that higher volume. Sorry to interrupt the video guys, but I was just editing the video and I forgot to mention this big announcement. We now have YouTube channel memberships live on the channel. So I'm gonna have a full video breaking down exactly what that means, but let me explain quickly. Joining the Jack Calisthenics membership is gonna mean you're gonna really help support the channel because without you guys, this channel, it wouldn't exist. I can't do this without you guys. So by joining, you're really gonna help support me and I'm gonna take you along on this journey with me. Also, you guys are gonna get perks. So I'm gonna break it down in that other video, like I said, but you're gonna get perks like individual form checks, one-to-one -one Zoom calls, all included in the membership. I'm gonna also have the Jack Calisthenics training vlogs where I break down the tips I use in my videos to give you guys so you can see the tips used in practice. If you do join and don't like it, don't worry, you can get a full refund, so don't worry about that. But if you are curious about working with me, having me train you to get you the planche just like I did, then hit the join button down below. That will take you to another page where all the information are. There's also another short video explaining a bit more about the channel memberships and how you can join the Jack Calisthenics gang. So don't worry, I am confident I can help you get that planche by joining this membership because any roadblock, I'm gonna be there to help you personally, myself. No team, just me. So guys, if you're interested, check down below. In any case, on with the video. Now we were into the second week. So this second week was still muscular conditioning and hypertrophy, which of course means high reps or high volume. So still, we were still on the high volume kind of phase, hypertrophy phase, but the thing here was difficulty increased. First week was moderate difficulty, second week is hard difficulty. So what does hard difficulty mean? This means intensity is gonna increase. Week one compared to week two, intensity was here for week one and now intensity is here for week two. But in terms of volume, well volume was here for week one and then we decreased volume a little bit because as you can see from the program, we took away one set. So instead of doing four sets for everything, we're doing three sets. That's because we have this increase in intensity. So we decreased the volume just to kind of offset that so we don't overtrain because I don't want to be too sore for the next workout or not recover for the other workouts I have in 
in the week. And how did we increase the difficulty? Well, as you can see in the program, for the assisted hold, we went from, instead of doing a green band at the start, we would still warm up with the green band, but then we would do our 20 seconds hold with the yellow band, then the red band for 16 seconds, and then again for 12 to 16 seconds. So these were again very long holds, but now we're working more with the yellow and red band, so that's more of our body weight that we're gonna have to get used to holding up in that straddle planche, but with a hollow body position. So there were still four to five workouts, again, that last last workout was optional if you want to do it but then the fourth workout that's where you do a max hold so we still have max holds in this workout program so there's still a time and a place when you don't want to do your max holds but for most of the workouts or most of the program about 70% of the program it's mostly not max holds but there's still a time and a place when you want to do your max hold week three oh man was week three hard so week three is the high intensity week so this is where we stop training high volume and now we're really going into the strength phase. Week three is basically the strength week. So as you can see, we're still on three sets. So the volume compared to week two is basically the same in terms of the sets. We also decrease the number of reps for the accessories. So instead of doing, you know, 10, 12 reps for the accessories, we're now cutting it at six. So we're still progressively overloading with those accessories, but we're cutting the volume. So in terms of volume, we're decreasing that for week three, but that's because intensity is so much higher. So trust me, this week is hard, but this is where you don't want to try and build up too much fatigue. You wanna get that good stimulus with as minimal amount of fatigue as you can. So that's why there's only three workouts in this week instead of four or five, because if you're doing four or five, you probably wouldn't recover for the next week. And probably by the end of the week, you wouldn't be able to get in an effective workout. So that's why three workouts in this week was really good. So now we're in week four, which is still a strength week. And I like to call this week the acclimation week. And why? Because now we would have been used to a band. We've been using a band for three weeks now in a row but now we're gonna get rid of that band. So that's gonna be a new stimulus now, again, for the body to adapt to, which is call, gonna cause you to get stronger. So this is where you can see that everything blue on the program, that's gonna be unassisted holds. And I know it says 85%, that's because you're not trying to go all out, you're trying to do unassisted holds, but you know, maybe come down from the strider planche, maybe one or two seconds before you hit your max. So these are not max attempts. That's why I have 85%, but it's blue, so that's without a band. So as you can see from week three to week four, intensity increases and we increase volume a tiny bit. That's because we should have hoped to have adapted to that high intensity from week three because that was really hard, but we got a lot of rest because there was only three workouts that week. So in week four, we can increase the intensity of the accessories just a little bit, you know, increase the reps a little bit because now hopefully we're adapted to that high intensity slide. But as we can see, the main lifts are still only three sets because we don't want to push those too much. And guys, in this week is where my planche took a skyrocket. As soon as I took off the band, it was like I was still using a band. I was pretty strong in this week. And as you can see, I got some of my best straddle planche holds in terms of form, not in terms of, you know, hold length. In terms of form, I've got some of my best straddle planche holds ever. And until this point, I didn't know if this workout plan was actually going to help me. I didn't know if doing it this way, this periodized program kind of stuff, if that worked for calisthenics properly until this point. So I wasn't sure of, oh, maybe I should be doing more attempts. Maybe I should be doing more max holds. Until this point, I did that clean hollow body straddle planche hold. Then I was like, wow, okay, this works. I'm going to carry on and do this a bit more, finish off the program. And that's what I did. So by the end of week four, I was really on a high. I've had the best straddle planche I've ever had in terms of form. And I was understanding what I had to do with my body to get into that position. And now I could do it without a band. However, at the end of week four, I got invited to go to a gym and work out with some other calisthenics guys. I'll show you a few clips on screen. But the problem was the next week I had to test my maxes, but the guys at the gym I was training with, they wanted to go really hard that week. And I got roped into, I was trying to be like, no, I have to test my maxes. So I'm not gonna overdo it so that I'm fatigued for next week. But guys, I got roped in. I tried not to, but I got roped in. So after this workout, I was so sore. You can see on screen, we were doing sets and sets and sets, sets and reps, sets and reps. Keep going, dips, 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 muscle ups. It, it didn't end and I got a little bit too sore. So the holds on this day were not too bad. I wasn't too happy with them because I don't feel like I held as long as I could if I didn't do that other training session and wasn't so sore. 
but that was okay. We we're gonna leave it for Friday. And well, let me show you the clip to see if we get that five second clean hollow body straddle punch hold, as well as over two reps of the full front lever pull up. This was incredible. In only four to five weeks, I'd done the best straddle punch hold in terms of form I've ever done in like four years of training. This is exactly how Valentin Blanc trains. If you've watched that video, you'll understand. He also goes from high volume to high intensity, clean form. Then he goes high volume again, you know, not so good form, but then clean form, high intensity. He keeps converting it back and forth. If that doesn't make sense, then you can go watch that video. But this is now what I'm gonna do moving forward. And to quickly go over week six, this is a deload week. So we're gonna go 50% intensity of week one and then half of the reps. So it's gonna be very, very light. So you keep working on technique, but you allow your body to recover. And that's it. That's how I use block periodization, strength principle, to increase my planche performance in only four weeks and you guys potentially could have good success while periodizing your programs as well if you do something similar. I hope this makes sense and helps explain the other videos I did on strength principles. If you missed those, then you wanna watch that video on the strength principles. It's gonna break down the basics of this programming and strength principles, and it's gonna get you going so you can periodize your own programs to really progress with your planche performance.